David Goggins is someone who's inspired me. He's interested me, um, and so have many other people. A lot of people resident, uh, are interested in his story. He's got a crazy story. He grew up, uh, his, his father had a lot of money, was successful financially, but he was an asshole. He would beat up David, beat up David's mom, and to the point where they, they ran away and moved across the country, and they grew up, uh, and then you know he grew up, he didn't have any money, and then his, uh, his mom started dating some guy that she was gonna marry, uh, she was gonna get remarried and David really liked him. They had a good relationship and then that guy got murdered and and I guess right afterwards he was on going to school on the bus and the bus accidentally ran over a kid. The blood splattered up against the, uh, the window on the bus. Very traumatic. And then he ends up joining the military, joins, gets out, gains a bunch of weight, he's 300 pounds, spraying for cockroaches, uh, not loving life, being a fat ass, and then one day he's at work and just, he finds, as he said, the mother load of cockroaches, and he was like, I quit. I'm out, I don't wanna join the Navy SEALs, and, but he's 300 pounds, he loses over like 100 pounds in a couple of months, makes it, but then ends up having to go through the Navy SEAL boot camp multiple times, goes through Hell Week three times, I believe, he had, on the last time, he had uh, hairline fractures all throughout his calf bones and he duct taped up his legs and just suffered through. Afterwards, uh, he makes it through and then he signs up and does a 100 mile race to raise money for um, uh, some Navy SEALs that died. And then he just runs 100 miles without any training. And uh, I'm over here training for 50 miles like a pussy. And two weeks after he runs his 100 miles, he goes and runs a marathon and qualifies for the Boston Marathon and then proceeds to just run all sorts, just like all these consecutive 100 mile races, 50, 60, even 200 mile races, does all this crazy stuff. And then now he's, you know, like a motivational speaker, a very really interesting book. Uh, he's popular. He's got a great message. Uh, I love listening to the guy, but I can't help I think it's completely sincere, but I can't help thinking about it like, wow, this is just like a very strange way to approach dealing with one's issues, one's childhood trauma. It, and it seems like it's wildly overcompensating or an extremely unhealthy way to deal with things. Like I imagine going to a therapist or a psych psychologist, psychiatrist or whoever with uh, you know this set of childhood traumas and then the doctor is just like, oh, I know what you need. You need to run 500 miles and you'll be as good as gold. You'd be like, WTF, I don't see the connection. And neither do I. And that's part of what I'm talking about here. I mean, me, like everyone, I've had, you know, my childhood issues. Um, I don't see an immediate connection between running 50 miles and anything that's happened to me in the past. I think with David and to a certain extent with myself and anyone that does anything, uh, anything that's physically challenging is like, you have experiences that make you feel weak and helpless and whatever, and you can do something that's going to make you feel strong. Um, I can't help, but it's just, it's such a crazy thing to do. And you look at it cause it's not a healthy thing to do to run, uh, such a great long distance. And, um, and looking at David, like, oh, he does the no days off, you know, on a rest day, he's running seven miles at least still, and he's in his mid to late forties. I don't know. And, I mean, it's just crazy. And, and I just can't help thinking like this guy's grew up with his dad beating the shit out of him. And now as a way to heal, he beats the shit out of himself via making himself run 50, hundred mile races. Like, I can't help but seeing it in that lens. And um, it's crazy. And then on the complete other end of the spectrum, I think of the story of the Buddha, who his dad was the king and um, he wanted his son to be raised without any bad experiences, zero childhood trauma. So he grew up in the castle and he wasn't allowed to experience anything bad. And then one day he's like, I need to get out of the castle. And his dad's like, okay, well, we'll make sure that, you know, secretly behind the Buddha baby's back, 
was like, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't experience anything bad. But inevitably, he sees some sick guy and a dying guy. And he's like, what the hell is this? And then Rose is like, yeah, you know, like everyone dies. Life is suffering. Life sucks. And he was like, oh my goodness. I'm going to go sit underneath a tree and eat nothing but a grain of rice for seven years. Um, or a grain of rice a day for seven years until I figure out that there's a better way to do things. So the Buddha grew up without any bad experiences as a childhood. And yet he still has to go be a, a masochist for years until he figures out the way. And, uh, I mean, when you get down to it, it's just the hero's journey. It's just the story of everyone. Uh, it's the story of human existence. Uh, and the first noble truth of Buddhism is that life is suffering. Like life just sucks. And the only way to deal with it or a way to deal with it is by just accepting that life sucks and running a long distance, running 50 miles, running 100, and just dealing with it whichever way that you can answer to yourself. For David, it was to run a gazillion miles. I guess for me, for this time period, it's to run 50. So that's it.